So the always controversial Black Rifle Coffee Company is in the news once again. This time it's because an employee lawsuit alleging sexual harassment and other workplace misconduct against the CEO, Evan Hafer. So let's talk about this. So like I said in the intro, in this video, I wanna talk about something that I saw pop up recently and even actually warranted a gun meme review from Brandon Herrera. Recently, a lawsuit has popped up on social media which shows allegations of uh, sexual harassment and other workplace misconduct. Uh, essentially, that was engaged in by the Black Rifle CEO, Evan Hafer. Now, before I go more into this lawsuit and all the background surrounding Black Rifle Coffee, I wanna let you all know about my relationship with the company and really with uh, the CEO, Evan Hafer. And the reality is I don't have any affiliation with Black Rifle. I, however, have spoken with Evan Hafer in the past. Uh, we are cordial. Uh, essentially what happened is I've put out some videos in the past that maybe don't uh, paint Black Rifle in the best light. Um, I'm not a huge fan of some of the conduct that they've engaged in, but because of those videos, I've had discussions with Evan and he's always kind of just been very neutral. He's appreciated that I always try to give just factual information and stay on the middle of this so you guys can decide for yourself what you believe. In full disclosure, I also wanna note that I am also sponsored by a different coffee company, which is called Blackout Coffee, not Black Rifle Coffee. And recently they became a sponsor of the channel. And also recently I purchased some stock shares or some shares in the company. Um, I'm good friends with one of their co-owners, which is Jared from Guns and Gadgets. So just in full disclosure, that's my relationship with Black Rifle, Evan Hafer, and a different coffee company as well. So now that everything's out on the table, let's talk about Black Rifle Coffee and this recent incident and how this all kind of popped up. Many in the Second Amendment community have increasingly become concerned about the activities of Black Rifle Coffee because really of two main situations. The first, obviously, was the major blowout in regards to Kyle Rittenhouse. As many of you may recall, in November of 2020, Cal Rittenhouse actually made bail. In the first picture of him after he made bail, he was actually wearing a Black Rifle Coffee Company shirt. Subsequently, various companies and news sources are claimed to have started to attack Black Rifle, essentially for sponsoring Kyle is what the allegation was. In my prior discussions with Evan, he also mentioned that they started to receive calls from their vendors, from their distributors, and also their banks. Uh, essentially threatening that they would pull the plug on them because they were sponsoring Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, because of this pressure, Evan claims that the company decided to put out a statement, and it's this original statement that really upset pretty much everybody in the 2A community and other communities as well. Essentially, the company was trying to distance themselves as much as possible from Kyle Rittenhouse and the allegations that they were sponsoring him. Now, obviously, those statements upset a lot of people, me included, a lot of us in the Second Amendment community were not happy with those statements because we supported Kyle. We agreed that he 100% was justified in his actions. And we understood that the litigation and the lawsuit was not just because of this one specific issue, but really it was our right to self-defense that was really on trial. Now, ultimately, Kyle, of course, was vindicated. He was found not guilty. Um, but really, at that time, um, it was kind of a big blow to Black Rifle Coffee because they were distancing themselves and also they were making statements about how they were not a two-way company or a gun company. Um, essentially that they were just simply a veteran company or a coffee company, all while having Black Rifle as their actual name, using images of guns on their products and leaning heavily on firearms in their promotional videos. There were also concerns about prior donations to liberal candidates by Evan and other individuals within the organization. So obviously that concerned people as well. So the narrative became maybe Black Rifle Coffee Company is not the conservative, right-leaning, Second Amendment friendly company that we all believe they were. Now, all of that was big news for a while, but eventually it died down. But later a new issue popped up, which was an interview the company did, which Evan did and Matt Best did with the New York Times. Uh, from that discussion, many people got the impression that Black Rifle was attacking people within their customer base. Um, maybe they were attacking their conservative customers, which their company was built on, and where they were really kind of just playing into the liberal narratives about their very own customers. Again, all of that eventually kind of blew over, but then last year, the company announced that they were going public. So that was a big step for them. They went public. They had publicly traded stocks. But then right after that, there was a lawsuit that was filed against Black Rifle Coffee because of stock fraud. 
Now, after going public, the a management company called 1791 filed that lawsuit against them. I've done a dedicated video on that, talking about the letter that was sent out and uh, just talking about that whole issue. If you're interested in that, you can watch that video. But that was kind of the third major issue that popped up in regards to Black Rifle. And that leads us to this newest incident. The newest chapter of all this saga is a lawsuit which was filed in 2018 and lasted until 2019. Now, this is resurfaced. It's an old lawsuit. It's since been settled. But again, it's raising a lot of concerns about the CEO, Evan Hafer, and Black Rifle. Now, the lawsuit alleges that in 2017, there was an employee there at BRCC, which was uh, Mr. Roper. And Mr. Roper, I guess, had engaged in a handgun shooting competition against Evan Hafer. Um, and essentially, Evan lost. And I guess the allegation is that he got upset about that and then kind of had a vendetta against Mr. Roper. The lawsuit goes on to say that in early August of 2016, Mr. Roper was forced to strip down to his underwear and participate in a marketing video where his image was digitally altered to look like he was naked. Mr. Roper was not given an opportunity to refuse to participate in this video. In the video, he is asked to pretend to do sit-ups in a room with various other men who are allegedly having, quote unquote, a hot dog party. Again, there are going to be some wild things that you hear in this lawsuit. Again, it goes on to say that on or about August 15th of 2016, Evan Hafer called Mr. Roper into his office. It states that in front of Mr. Roper and several other people in his office, Mr. Hafer stripped down all of his clothes and stood in front of Mr. Roper completely naked. Then the lawsuit goes on to say that several days later, Mr. Roper and Mr. Hafer were working alone in a conference room when Mr. Hafer turned to Mr. Roper and said, why don't we close that door and butt blank the blank out of each other? Again, absolutely wild. Uh, the lawsuit says that Mr. Roper rejected the sexual uh, proposition and the meeting continued in an awkward tension. Then there were also allegations that Evan on multiple occasions used a religious slur against Mr. Roper because he was a Mormon. I'm not going to repeat it. If you want to read what else happened, you can read the uh, lawsuit that I'll link down below. Now, where I personally believe this lawsuit really stems from, it has to do with the fact that uh, Mr. Roper has uh, insurance that he brought in. Uh, he was supposed to receive commissions from insurance that he brought in for the employees. The issue in the lawsuit was that BRCC had a contract with him saying that he was going to get those commissions essentially forever. But then all of a sudden they said, no, you're not going to get those commissions. In fact, the lawsuit alleges that there was a threatening meeting between um, Mr. Hafer and Mr. Roper on this very issue. The allegations in the lawsuit are that when Mr. Roper arrived at BRCC, he was met at the door of the office by Mr. Hafer, who was openly carrying a gun in an unlocked holster on his hip, with the gun partially dislodged from the holster. The lawsuit goes on to say that Evan kept his hand on the gun and that the general counsel was also there and then asked Mr. Roper if he was concealed carrying a weapon. Mr. Roper said he was, but that he could leave his firearm in his car if they wanted. And to that, Mr. Hafer responded and essentially told Mr. Roper that if he moved for his weapon, that he would be shot on the spot. So all this, of course, does not look good for Evan Hafer and the company. But I do have some additional facts that I want to bring to light to help you guys make an educated decision on this whole issue. Now, first and foremost, this is not a new or current lawsuit. This is something that was filed back in 2018 and was in fact resolved in 2019. Since then, Evan and Mr. Roper, the employee there, are still friends. Uh, in fact, a 2022 article stated that essentially they're still good friends. The article states on August 7th, 2018, Mr. Roper filed a lawsuit in the third district court of Salt Lake County against Evan Hafer, a Black Rifle Coffee founder, and the company stemming from his concerns about workplace language used in the early days of the firm. All parties reached a private settlement and on January 7th, 2019, the case was dismissed with prejudice, ending the dispute. So again, it's an old lawsuit and it was resolved back in 2019. Now, in this same magazine article, which again came out way before all this stuff started to come to light, Mr. Roper, the employee, told the magazine that he and Evan were pals before they even worked together. And to this day, they remain friends. And in fact, they do stuff still together and they actually did a project together in result of the uh, incident that happened in Uvalde. Also, I want to point out that the website that is now hosting the lawsuit that everyone is viewing and that's circulating around and everyone's pulling this lawsuit from 
is actually owned and operated by the same individual who owns and operates 1791 Management, which if that rings a bell, that's the same uh, management company that filed that stock uh, fraud lawsuit against BRCC. So obviously there's likely some sort of lien against Black Rifle because again, they have a lawsuit against them on the stock fraud issue. Also full disclosure that the person who manages 1791 and who also owns and operates this website that's hosting this lawsuit. Um, I've had contact with him. He's reached out to me. I had one telephone conference uh, conversation with him. Uh, generally, I like to stay out of this drama stuff, especially when lawsuits like this are old. Uh, but now that everyone is talking about this, multiple YouTube and media spaces and, and commentators are talking about this, I kind of want to give you guys the full picture of the things that I know. So that's really where this stands. Uh, if you want some good memes about this whole issue, I highly recommend you go check out Brandon Herrera's gun meme review where he talks about this. There were some very interesting things that came out of this. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fill the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of toy news. As always, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos, you guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.